I was a little surprised that a lot of people aren't aware of Control Pad for X-Plane, which is a free program offered by Laminar for controlling the simulator, providing basically an instructor station for use that's available on the iPad. I find it especially useful when someone else is using my simulator as a guest and I need to run the simulator for them. I'm always reaching over their shoulders to grab the keyboard and especially with VR because the menus that are available in VR are not visible on the screen or they're visible but they're not accessible and with the control pad I'm able to do everything I need to do to uh, to set up the simulator, change weather, locations, airplanes, all that stuff remotely for someone while they're wearing the VR headset. So let's take a look at what we can do with control pad for X-Plane. Now while the uh, control pad interface is pretty basic it opens you to a start position here. You can see along the bottom of the uh, screen there's the basic buttons menus. You click start and you can type in an, a uh, base into the field where it says start at there um, and it will give you the, uh, the possibility of changing the airports. Here's a craft. When you click craft it shows you all the aircraft that are loaded. The uh, Cirrus was the one that was loaded when we started the simulator but if we find the Columbia uh, 400 for example uh, and click that and it switches us right. You can see we drop right into that and uh, we can pick any of the uh, of the aircraft. They're listed, listed according to the categories and uh, let's find the F4 Phantom, McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom. We'll click that and it should put us right into the Phantom cockpit. This is great when you're uh, <clears throat> wanting to change your aircraft for people who are uh, uh, flying your simulator, uh, especially under the VR hood. Uh, you can uh, change the airplanes for them without having them having to mess with any of the, uh, any of the uh, other uh, menus. Now we click Start. <clears throat> As I said before, we can uh, we can backspace and type in uh, let's put in uh, Fort Lauderdale FLL and uh, it shows us all the options for that now. And at the top, we can click a a position that we want to go to. You can see similar to the uh, uh, airplane menus, there's a runway and then there's the three mile final and ten mile final for each runway also. So it takes a little while for this to load up because of the uh, fact that uh, it has to load the scenery for a different area. Uh, but once you get the scenery loaded for the area, there we go, uh, once you get it loaded for the specific area, uh, you can change uh, the layout. I'll click 10 mile final there and click 10 mile final and now there we're on 10 mile final to runway 10 left. Click 3 mile final and it should move us there here in just a second as it's calculating the view. It takes a minute now I'll click it again just in case it didn't register. There we go. Click the runway again and there we go. Back to the runway and switch to runway 28 right and that happens pretty quick. So you can see how you can reset the aircraft any way you want. Works just great. Now there's also special starts. You can see that once you select the bottom menu, the menus above give you options and here's all the all the glider toes and so on. Then weight and balance, uh, you can just drag that little CG around wherever you want to change the, the weight and the CG location. You can even see the airplane uh, pitching a little bit as the CG moves forward and aft. Uh, the payload, individual fuel tanks, and then of course the default button to put it back to the default for that aircraft. Under weather, you can see there's uh, several menus. First we'll click time on the left there. We can set the time. You can see the sun angle. There we go into the night time. We drag it back through day here in just a second and then uh, back through the day, midday, and you can see the shadows moving and then to uh, morning, night, and then midnight again. We also can change the date. Uh, of course there's no seasonal textures in the X-Plane but you can see the sun angles changing slightly as a different time of the year as the sun position changes. If we click atmosphere we have control over almost all the all the uh, weather issues. Of course we can bring the RVR down 
the visibility down and then set the RVR. There's, there's a, right there's 700 RVR. That's the 600 takeoff minimums for most airliners. Um, that uh, 600 foot RVR. That's what it looks like. And uh, pretty granular control of that the visibility. We can see rain and uh, storms. And then we can also, you can see the runway conditions, whether it's icy, wet. Doesn't really change the texture in X plane, the temperature and barometric pressure. Below that, thermal coverage to set the uh, thermal strength and coverage for gliders. Um, and then you can see some preset buttons down there MVFR, uh, IFR, IFR Cat 1, 1200 RVR. You can see we can. We can set different uh, CAV OK, ceiling visibility OK. So that's the atmosphere. Then we click clouds, and you can see the three layers of clouds. We can select preset buttons to select the, the cloud coverage, and then we can set the bases and tops on each one, which is kind of cool. Just like in the simulator, but we can do that. And uh, and finally, the wind. We can uh, set the altitudes and wind directions, turbulence, gusts, and so on. Just by dragging the sliders, you can see we can change the direction. And we can grab the, we can set the wind and the gusts uh, wherever we want them. And also the turbulence. We'll get rid of that. Now the next menu here is a fail. And you can see it has a buttons above that that say world systems instruments different categories of failures and by clicking the buttons you can you can fail certain things which is great for being an instructor um, with someone you can repair all with that one button uh, you can quick start toggle pause and so on here's systems you can see a whole number of systems lights, autopods, control, landing gear, and so on. A wide, wide variety. Very, very good control over, uh, over the systems in the aircraft, including instrument failures and so on. Engines. And so on. So you, there's a good look at all the all the uh, potential uh, uh, failures that are available. Now this map button is where I spend most of my time when I'm uh, simulating. You have, uh, see the PFD button is, uh, is on, so we have a little PFD with some uh, vision, some synthetic vision in the top. Also have uh, the map with uh, the ability to toggle on nav aids. When they're red, of course, they're turned off. You can see the airplane of location and uh, then we have the uh, set window which allows you to uh, set the altitude uh, heading and speed of the aircraft. If I run the uh, altitude up by just grabbing that uh, those uh, digits and run it up to 500 feet, oops, no airspeed, we're going to lawn dart in Boom, okay. Well, that's what happens when you go to 500 feet with no airspeed. But anyway, that's, uh, you get the idea how that works. The situation button allows us to introduce artificial intelligence uh, instructor to challenge you. Uh, several different uh, kinds of challenges, weather, so on, unpredictability. We can also save a situation and load a situation by clicking the load button. The set button uh, when we click the set button, uh, it gives us different interfaces, the dark, medium, and bright. Uh, and we can also uh, quit and shut down X-Plane. So now back to the cockpit for uh, one more view of the uh, map interface. You can see now we have set selected map showing us the altitude, heading, speed, and the position and of course the synthetic vision above as we approach the coast of South Florida. Now, if we, uh, I wanted to show you uh, as we arrive here. I wanted to show you the uh, the way the uh, glide slope is also visible if we select that button. Uh, if we select map here and we're heading on now, we're on final to Miami International. 
you can see that uh, that the position of the aircraft, the localizer, all that's available. We can pinch and squeeze. We can pan with our fingers. Very useful. And uh, if we click GLS, you can see there's the glide path. Now the airplane looks like it's sideways, but that's a side view of the glide slope down to the runway. And uh, we can just swap back, turn that on and off if we want a better view of the localizer. We can zoom in on that if we need to and, and monitor. And one thing we can do is take a screenshot of this on our iPad and uh, share this with, a, with a, whoever we're flying with to let them see if there's something interesting to show them. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the basics of the map and it's very powerful for use with control pad. So if you're not using control pad and you fly X-Plane regularly, I say why the heck not? It's a great addition. It's free. And as I said before, especially useful when you have a guest in your simulator who's flying, you can sit back at the instructor station and manage the simulator without having to reach over their shoulders. And especially if they're wearing the VR goggles and you have no real idea what they're looking at, especially, especially the menus inside VR. If you enjoy my videos, please, please like, share, and subscribe. You can click the notification button and you will be notified every time I put a new video up. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.